na mimi vile vile nataka niseme hivi kwa wanajubilii wote kila mmoja wetu awe tayari tutaenda tushindane kwa nomination ya jubilee na wale ambao watashindwa wakubali kwa sababu asiyekubali kushindwa si mshindani na mimi saa hizi ni deputy president nasaidia uhuru kenyata kuhakikisha kwamba manifesto ya jubilee inatimia program ya big four inasonga mbele mpaka tufikie mahali ambapo itafaulu hiyo nafasi ingine ikikuja kule mbele mimi nitashindana na wale watakuwa ndani ya jubilee na mimi niko tayari kama jubilee itaamua mtu mwingine kupitia kwa njia ya demokrasia mimi niko tayari kuunga huyo mwingine mkono that was of course the deputy president of the republic of kenya william samoy ruto speaking recently very emotional man you can see it from his body language but what is most interesting is that this was in response yeah to the attack actually attacks yeah a barrage of very serious attacks from central province uh, legislators or shall we say mount kenya region legislators and politicians and advisors to president uhuru kenyatta actually the whole thing was kicked off you know the latest uh, attacks on the deputy president were kicked off by bwana david murade who's one of the most influential advisors to president uru kenyatta yeah, and this was at the maragoli annual festival yeah on boxing day i believe so what the deputy president was doing here was responding to those attacks now to be very honest with you if i were him i would not have responded to those attacks i'd have ignored them but that is me obviously the deputy president knows a lot more than i do yeah and therefore he must have had good reason to take on yeah those who are attacking him that is very possible yeah because i'm a fair political analyst yeah i give uh, the people i'm talking about the benefit of the doubt However, if you really pushed me, yeah, I'll tell you that my gut feeling tells me it was an emotional response. Yeah, it was a knee jerk response. Ati wale watu wamesema nini? Eh. Eh. Ai ya 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 ya. Hiyo lazima tujibu. Lazima. Kwani hao watu wanafikiri ni kina nani? Where were they when I was uh, creating the Huru presidency? Eh? Who do they think they are? Ntawajibu. Eh, bwana deputy president you know just cool it eh usiwajibu na asira sana and then response from deputy president usijali i will make sure i'm level headed nikuwajibu lakini kuwajibu lazima tuwajibu hii matusi yote ni ya nini yep that's what i'm imagining a uh, loose translation for the sake of those who don't understand kiswahili what are those people saying about us what are they saying about us definitely we're going to respond yeah what are all these insults about where were these people when i was creating the huru kenyatta presidency i must respond now if this is true if my theories are true then may i point out that this is not how politics is played yeah if you want to win at the game of politics <laughs> knee jerk reactions will not take you very far because you could be walking in fact in most cases you're walking right into a trap being set by the opposite uh, your your enemies yeah your political enemies and i'm not attacking the deputy president yeah i'm simply analyzing his political tactics my sincere hope is that those tactics will change for the better at least for the sake of those who want to see samoy ruto in state house in 2022 as the president of the country now what i want to do today is to look at this issue of political tactics a little deeper and a little wider now politicians at this level of politics yeah even at lower levels but especially at this 
high level high stakes <laughs> place in politics must have sounding boards you know people they can bounce ideas off people who advise them people who can tell them as it is for instance people who can tell them much later in the evening yeah about a speech they made during the day and tell them in the face mr deputy president you sounded weak i think you should have done this and that and that and that then you'd not have sounded so weak and then somebody else in the team says no i think the president the deputy president came off uh, okay yeah because of this and this and that those are the close advisors and in politics your close advisors will make or they'll break you and the big challenge for a leader is to know which advice to take yeah or which particular advisor to take seriously yeah and to make them influential in your team and which one not to and that involves knowing people knowing the strength of your advisors now <laughs> advisors to politicians and leaders did not start yesterday king david had a very influential advisor a man called ahithophel now according to the bible david's government was overturned <laughs> there was a coup in the palace and his son absalom took over and absalom wanted to completely finish his father david yeah, and take over uh, power and absalom was completely unaware that he had a very great asset on his side that would help him finish off his father and grab power and it was this advisor called ahithophel a yeah, very brilliant man a man who had advised his father for many years <laughs> and in many ways his father's secret weapon but obviously absalom was a shallow man <laughs> he was not able to look at things deeply <laughs> which is very critical in politics because if he had looked at things deeply he'd have known that his father was a formidable opponent the greatest king israel ever had to this date so what david did what king david did <laughs> he knew that this advice of his now advising his son <laughs> could really mess up things for him so what did he do he sent his friend a man called ushai back to absalom and the whole idea was for this who shy to counteract the advice uh, ahithophel would give to his son his naive shallow son and who shy did his job because when ahithophel gave very brilliant advice to attack david immediately when he was already weary and weak at his weakest point uh, who shy counteracted that advice and told absalom no let's wait attacking at this time is not right let's wait and gather a bigger army so that we can counter uh, david's uh, strength now the bible says something very interesting yeah this can be found in second samuel chapter 17 from verse 11 to 13 the bible says the lord had purposed to defeat the good advice of ahithophel and that is precisely where i'm coming from <laughs> the message here is very clear your advisors can make or break you in a second and notice the words used here to defeat the good advice the lord had purpose to defeat the good advice so good advice can be defeated and it can make all the difference between uh, sticking to power or remaining in power and losing that power because at this time Absalom was on top you know he was he was, he was in charge of the palace he had taken over the palace he had even taken over his father's concubines <laughs> i hope i don't need to spell that out for you <laughs> now most of us know how this story ended yeah david won and haithophel was so emotional yeah he was so struck yeah by the fact that his advice had been rejected that he went and arranged all his worldly affairs and then he hung himself hey <laughs> so now that i've been able to prove the obvious yeah that your advisors are extremely important 
even if you are vying for a mayor MCA seat or MP, yeah, let alone going for the highest seat in the land. Now that I've been able to prove how important advisor, advisors are in this game, let us take a closer look at the advisors of Deputy President William Samoy Ruto. But before we do that, let's take a closer look at the advisors of the people he's up against. Yeah, the two major political forces that William Samoy Ruto must defeat to become president of Kenya. To become president of Kenya, Ruto must defeat the handshake. Yeah, and of course the handshake kingpins are Raila Amolo Odinga and President Uru Kenyatta. Now, let me just clear up something very quickly, because I can hear somebody saying, Chris, how do you know that these people are fighting for the handshake? The president himself said recently that uh, Murade does not speak for him. Yeah, whatever remarks uh, when Murade made at uh, the Maragoli annual festival are not uh, from the president. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. So let me ask you a question. Who are these people speaking for? Who is Bonamrade speaking for? Is he speaking for himself? <laughs> hey, don't be naive, Bona. This is politics. And as I said in the video yesterday, politics is the art of not showing your hand. You do things, you do things mostly chini amaji. <laughs> yeah? And then you test the waters. And then after you've tested the waters adequately and observed the reactions, and thought very deeply, then you make your move. If you want to marry a young girl, just try and just try one day. In fact, try today. Walk up to her and tell her, I want to marry you. <laughs> Chances are you'll get a slap. Although I'm not very sure about that. <laughs> the way young ladies behave nowadays. <laughs> anyway, you get my point. First of all, you send her flowers. You know, you do things in your magic. Yeah. You take her for lunch. She tries to ask you, you know, what's the whole idea about this lunch? And, ah, she say, no, 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 I just want to get to know you better. Eh? I'm just a good guy. <laughs> you keep your hand well hidden. Your objectives well hidden until the right time. That's politics. So, what I want us to do is to take a closer look first at the advisors, current advisors of Raila Odinga and the current close advisors to President Uhuru Kenyatta. And we're going to do, get even deeper than that, because we will try to identify the Ahithophel <laughs> advisor in the Raila camp and in the Uhuru camp. And then finally, we'll identify the Ahithophel advisor in the DP William Ruto camp. Now, that should be a very interesting exercise, because if I'm right... And if the Bible is right, <laughs> and I'm sure the Bible is right, I may be wrong, then that exercise should be able to tell us who is going to win this battle, yeah? unless there's a change in the team of advisors. That's really what it is. Unless the most brilliant Ahithophel changes camps yeah, and moves from camp A to camp C, then we'll know camp C now has an edge. Yeah? Of course, unless uh, <laughs> Kampe do a David on Camp C, that is send somebody else to confuse <laughs> the most influential advisor. Now we shall do that very interesting exercise in the next video. As soon as that video is ready, you'll be able to see the link on the top left-hand corner of your screen. Just click on it and go to it. If the link is missing, then you'll know you've come here too early. Yeah, it's not yet ready. As soon as it's ready, it'll be up. So all you need to do is come back, yeah, shortly. But a quick one before I leave, yeah. The video I did yesterday, yeah, on the clashes, the 2007 clashes, <laughs> is a must-see. Don't miss it. Why? Because it will sober you. Yeah, because as people are politicking, yeah, and saying all kinds of uh, careless things, we have forgotten what happened a mere 11 years ago and more importantly the politics that was behind it 
the politics that was behind the bloodbath that unfolded in Kenya. Now I've seen in the comments area of that particular video a lot of speculation because I say the main person yeah, most responsible for what happened has never been mentioned anywhere. And people are mentioning there names of people who have been mentioned. Boss, najua kizungu ilikuja na meli. But I said very clearly, this Kenyan's name has not been mentioned anywhere. Anywhere means akuna mali metajwa. In other words, this Kenyan was the hidden hand behind the chaos. This Kenyan is the one who set up the infrastructure yeah, for the chaos, yeah, which was simply just taken over by others. So if somebody sets up the infrastructure for something, for war, for instance, yeah, but it's somebody else who declares the war, who takes the most credit? The person who set up the infrastructure. Yeah, so don't miss that video. Hey, it will be very, very revealing to you. Anyway, make sure you catch uh, that video and make sure you catch this analysis of advisors. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekuja.